Well, welcome to a brand new series on this channel which doesn't actually have a name yet and it's going to be very quick because it is freezing in the northeast today. This is Trevor. How's it going? He owns Vielo and there is a Vielo bicycle in front of me. It's yellow. You probably may recognize it already from other YouTube fame. It's been on Dave Arthur's channel before, but here is a bike check for you to watch. Have you got a puncher? Uh, can't do a bike check. Right. A bike check with a puncher. It's only flat at the bottom. This is my Vielo R plus one. And when I say mine, it's literally mine. So Vielo's a uh, brand that myself and my dad launched in 2018. Been in the industry 35 years as a distributor of other people's brands. And we decided there's an opportunity for us to step away from all of that corporate style and do our own thing. Um, so we initially launched with our V plus one gravel bike. And then the year after that, we um, we were looking for opportunities in the road sector to do a road bike. But we didn't just want another Me Too product, another road bike. So we were looking at um, where are the opportunities in the road bike market. Um, the lightest bike had been done by, you know, in the early noughties there was like sub 800 gram frame sets and everybody was chasing weight. Aero road bikes, we didn't have the R&D budget that a lot of big corporate brands have to chase you know, big aero wind tunnel data. Endurance and comfort, we had a lot of that already covered with the V, uh, the v Plus One. But what we did see on the horizon was manufacturers pushing more into one by. And that got us thinking, if we designed a frame that was entirely optimized around running a single chain ring on the front without a front mech, what would that give us? What, what does that free up? What opportunities does that get us? Um, we still want it to be modern. We're still gonna have disc brakes. We're still gonna have, you know, comfortable um, for the road surfaces around here. R plus one is, where, is what we came up with. We literally sat in Italians on the other side of here, drew it out on a napkin. Um, and started from there. So, Alphas One's full carbon frame set, this is the Alto version of the frame. So this frame's 880 grams. The Alto road bike with us is a wireless only frame set. So there are no shift cable ports on the frame at what? all. Nothing at all, there are only brake hoses. So you have to ride SRAM? You have to ride SRAM. Unless somebody else comes out with a wireless group set, uh, as it is right now, you have to ride SRAM. It is entirely designed for our chain ring. Um, so we do our own CNC alloy chain ring that matches with our bottom bracket. Reason for that is, I'll show you on the underside of the frame, the bottom bracket is pushed out as wide as possible. Because we're not having to accommodate an inner chain ring on the inside of the frame, we can have a BB and chain stays that are symmetrical, so you have a straight line all the way through. So from a power perspective, that section is 32% stiffer than the equivalent on a 2 by frame. And we can measure that, we can show that and demonstrate that. And all that extra material just makes it so much more stronger. Frame is designed to be relatively aero. We're not claiming it's the most aero frame set in the world. Um, it has an hour, uh, wasted hourglass head tube, so an inch and a half, inch and an eighth head tube. that's designed to be aerodynamic. There are cam tail profiles down the down tube and across the seat tube. Then you get to the back end. The back end is the bit that everybody comes to. It's the first bit that people come and point at in terms of why are the seat stays like that? They're designed that way because they're designed to be aero, but they're also allowed, designed to have a small amount of mechanical flex to it as well. You've got something that is comfortable, optimized around a 30 mil tire for the road service vibrations. And then when it gets a bit lumpier, you've got um, the seat stay that gives you a bit more comfort as well. We finished the frame set with our own one piece handlebar and stem unit. It's just a full carbon fiber handlebar there's no brake hoses on it visible at all. They all go in through the stem, in through the bar, through the frame set, and then out the chainstay or out to the front of the fork. We also use our own axle design as well, so it allows you for a fast, quick release axle, um, which makes it lighter again. So the handlebar, um, we designed it, so there's a slight step to it, but they're slightly swept back, so they're designed to be comfortable and modern. The frame set, when we were looking to design it, we weren't chasing pro tour athletes. We know our customers aren't that less than 1% of elite level athletes that want to be in the most aggressive racing position. And by not being constrained, constrained by the front mech, we're able to tweak the geometry. So the seat tube ankles slightly further forward, it allows to open your hips up a bit more. You're not in a super, super aggressive position. It's designed to be comfortable and fast. We've got a Camtail Aero seat post. Again, it's our own design. And then there's this one, this one's mine. So this one is set up in my spec, the way I'd like it. I have tram red access, uh, ETAP access shifters on this. Um, that's paired up with a force rear mech on the back of mine um, and a 1036 set. 
I also run a 44 tooth chainring on the front. You can go on the road, we generally spec either a 44 or a 46 for our one by setup. It depends on what you want to use it for. You can come down to a 42 if you're touring or bike packing. There's lots of different options there. I think a lot of people's fear on one by is they worry about gear range anxiety and worrying about having enough gears to climb and enough gears to descend still at speed. I think a lot of people's fears sit back from 10 speed systems back in the day or even 11 speed systems. This is a 12 speed SRAM system. There is 13 speed offerings now. You know, with some of the mountain bike offerings from SRAM, you can get a 1052 cassette. You could climb up a wall with that. It's so, there are so many different options out there. Wheel wise, uh, I've got zip uh, 303 fire crests on this one. They're 30 mil wide and 40 mil deep. And these are Schwalbe Pro 1 uh, tires, again, 30 mil on those. So they're super comfortable, low pressures, designed really just for that broken tarmac surface. So you can just ride and float along. All over the Northeast. All over the Northeast, everywhere. Just done today. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've paired it with a fabric uh, carbon flat saddle. Uh, so it's a carbon rail fabric saddle, which matches up with their silicon bar tape. We wrap the bar tape slightly differently. So we wrap it outside in rather than inside out. So you don't end up with the silicon, um, you don't know with the insulation tape that you would normally put on your handlebar to finish it and tape it on. So you just ends up looking really, really neat. Yes, I am running SPD mountain bike pedals on this, but hey, it's what my gravel shoes are so comfortable that I will not ride anything else at the moment. I have a lightweight Edel Helfer bottle cage, which is 16 grams for the bottle cage. How, about, how much money does that cost? <laughs> it's 90 quid. Jeez. But, uh, <laughs> I think I've missed anything else on at the moment. Oh, uh, SRAM red crank arms. So they, our chain rings fit the direct mount fitting for the SRAM crank arms. We have our own chain ring and crank options as well, but these red crank arms are so light for a carbon crank set. Uh, weight wise, the bike comes in at about seven and a half uh, kilograms. It's super light, super comfortable, and it's our go anywhere road machine. When we were looking at designing the bikes, it's so easy to go to Asia and take an, an open world product, stick your name on the down tube, and look like everything else. Um, it's the exact opposite of what we wanted to be. We didn't want to be shouty graphics and too loud. So we wanted just the logo just on the top tube, out of the usual place. You know, it's a type of thing that you can look at. You'll notice that there's no graphics or acronyms or made up BS on the frame. It's, it's designed to have a conversation with somebody about the way that the bike looks. In a couple of colorways, so this one's mustard with the anthracite on the inside. It's re we can do it in the reverse as well, so anthracite and mustard. So you mentioned symmetrical chain stays and you've been able to do that because you're only running one by on all of the bikes is that why you have to use your special homemade chain ring as well yes what's the situation yeah so the reason being if you look at, imagine your normal two by setup you have to accommodate that inner chain ring um, so you end up with on a traditional road bike a chain stay that's wide and flat on the non-drive side and a chain stay that's tall slightly taller and narrower on the drive side and you, those, that mismatch creates flex. You end, if you put the power down, you can flex the frame more through that area. The way that we've designed it, by being able to push the chain ring out as far as possible, we can make the chain stays as wide and flat on both sides. So that symmetry gives you a mechanical shape that makes the frame super strong. And when you stand on the pedals, it just wants to go. Well, I think you should be very proud. This is exactly the kind of bike that I love to feature on my channel. There'll be more smaller brands doing cool stuff featured in videos going forwards. Uh, I really need a, a name. I need a name for this. It's like Bike Fit Tuesdays. Any questions for Trevor down below, but also suggestions for what this segment can be called. Let me know, did you enjoy it? Cheers. I enjoyed it. You're going to eat a pizza now? <laughs> yes.